it was a gun. I'm not voting. If we want to build our nation. The problem with the Somalians. Just want to experience something else than a black man. Move on, move on. like a horse with blinkers. On. Honestly say, I was about to have Corrupt. sex and then I pulled Crap, but it's nice. <laughs> I am Antina Maya. I'm 26 years old. I am currently residing in Portland once again where I grew up. My name is Shamila Slamlin. I'm 40 years old. I'm Sophia Mayer. I have been teaching for 38 years and uh, I'm retired now at the moment. I'm Tony Mayer, working at a PD company and um, this is what I'm doing for a living. In 2004, all my friends were smoking tough and I was thinking, oh my God, I look like such a chicken. I'm drinking a glass of cream soda, spoiler, and these people are smoking Cream soda tuck. Hello. Bob's your uncle. There was no peer pressure. There was no nothing. It was me saying, Hello, give me a soda. I'm not a Jewess. I'm not a chicken. Let me try some of it. And initially I was like, Why do you do this? It does nothing to you. And the evening when I got home, I'm like, Why do I feel like doing the dishes? I feel like turning the whole house upside down and turning it back again. It's not nice to live with a drug addict in the house. And especially, tuck, it's terrible. Because why, you never know when, when, they, when they snap and things just go wrong. Well, up until last week, I was smoking nine years later. And obviously the effects changed. I had to take in much more to get the effect which I got when I started. Because your body becomes so used to it that it doesn't really affect you. Like, when you start, you can smoke a 50 and it would last you for three days, the effect. Now I smoke a 50 and it feels like it lasts 50 seconds. It's a sickness. I would say it's a sickness. I see these things every day on the road. See people that is using drugs. I mean, I'm working in Weinberg. I see these trading, these guys are trading in front of me. They're not my children, they're doing these things every day. I walk up to the shop and I just see these things happening. What can the cops do? I don't know. I met Tino a year and a half ago. Yes. One Friday came with another friend around the corner, never left. Mm -hmm. Sit in the chair, was making jokes, and we went on like a house on fire. <laughs> yes, that is a good friend. Because why? She knows what is the consequences of drugs, and that's why she stopped. And she can she gets him off, gets him calm down when he's on a high, especially when he don't take his medication. He's on medication, as I told you, for his bipolar. And now, if he don't take that, then he also gets out of hand. Do you know what she did with the mother once? A got it is to speak a voice. No? Full, cookie yes. German. But the big one. Standing in front of the mother like this. I wanted to hit the mothers and windows. And they wanted to hit the mothers and the windows, but the mother standing right in front of it. So I said, do it. I do it. I was there in that side of Portland. Then I will break your legs, my sweetie. Bro. I was afraid of Ventino. Actually, really afraid. Because I heard so many things. I read so many things in the papers of Ventino, of um, people, of the people that's on drugs, especially on t how they kill their mothers for money, how they kill people for things. And I started getting afraid of Ventino because of Ventino sleeping in the same house as me. Tomorrow morning his father's going to work, then the two of us is alone. What is he going to do to me after I found out this? I'm the only one who has control of Ventino, not even the mother. Serious. One day, he stood right in front of me, he said to me, You! Oh, I got such a fright, because he never spoke to me like that. And I said to myself, Oh, this child is going to strangle me now. But he didn't. He was just upset because I didn't want to give him money to, to feed his need. And up till today, I'm still a little bit afraid. When Antino is on a high, I'm afraid of him. I stay far away from him. I don't, I don't get into an argument with him because why? I don't know what can happen.
What happens is she got no control of her emotions, so she got to hit you with something. If she don't hit you, then she clips for all day, all night. We will struggle with her until the next day. Now me and Sheila's the only one, two people that can look after her. Not even a mother can look after her like that. That is how close we became because yes, was no kids here, it's only the three of us. I don't want his friends around here. I just don't, I don't want your friends here. All of them, they used to come a lot. Um, I mean, people that you know, you know, girls and boys, you don't know who's a boyfriend or who's a girlfriend, because all the girls and boys together. I'm not interested in that. I want him to sort his life out. I was introduced to drugs in, at the age of 13 in 2000. And um, I, life from there became very changed. Let's say changed. And initially, like you would hear, many people would say, I started off smoking Taha at first. Not me, my very first drug was cocaine. I started off hardcore. But any other drug, I wasn't really into it as much as I, I was into, into Tuck. I was about to say as much as I am into Tuck. But um, I'm not really very familiar with um, rocks because it wasn't really a wonderful thing. It wasn't, never fascinated me. But um, and I did heroin once. Oh my God, I took one hit for the first time in my life. And I thought, but my God, I'm feeling nothing. Then I got up and I walked home and it was weather like this outside. I saw my gas and the next day when I opened my eyes, there was no gas, it was just glass doors, machines and pipes connected to me. I'm like, where am I? So I was in ICU, I ended up in ICU and that was when my parents found out that I had been on drugs. I was so shocked, I just looked at him. I asked him, and Tino, how could you do this to yourself? Because why, you know the consequences. I've been speaking to you, I've told you, I know the symptoms of someone that is on tuck. But to tell you the truth, I didn't know. And then I had the whole third degree at home. Why are you on drugs? What's wrong? But I, was, I had a very empty life. I had an absent father, even though he was there in body, but not in mind and soul. If Antina needed money for anything, Daddy needs money, there. That's all. Daddy, can I speak to you? No, I've got better things to do. I've got, I must go work. I've got work to do here. Yeah. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. But I've never got time to do anything for you. You can't trust him, so unfortunately, I'm his father. I live with this guy. When I turn my back, something is missing and that's a tough luck for me you know i would like him to come out of where he is but i don't see any help for him unless he's gonna help himself which is very important when i came from jail to be exact tomorrow it will be three weeks so today's like two weeks and six days i was very adamant about changing my life. I am seriously wanting to change my life and I want to find myself the real Antino deep down inside me. I'm not saying that this isn't the real Antino, but what I'm saying is I want to find the person I know. He has done it before, but then he asked me I must help him to go to a rehab. That was when I was still on medical. Then he goes to Claremont um, Crescent Clinic. He was here in Lenta here, and only two months, then he falls back. But now this time, he is doing it for himself. He's going out there, but as they told me, he was there only once or twice. I don't know. But he told me he was there every day. Don't know what to believe. I honestly don't believe it, not now anymore. We put a lot of money in for this poor guy to come up, but he's just failing. Tino is actually the sweetest person you can get, right? Misunderstood. Like to glamorize your life. I know Tino, ask him inside out. I, I started reading them because they used to steal a lot of people in, in my window, so I got to read him. I had to read you because it's 10 people at the time. And you take my cup and you take my this. But she was the only one that never took her put her hands on my stuff. 
not once. That is why I'm so crazy about her. He wants to, he wants to design dresses and things like that. Now I want him to become a designer, the designer he wants to be. And that is not something that is coming from yesterday. That is coming from when he was still small, then he'll draw little dollies with dresses on and whatever, or he'd draw, draw, draw the dress and the dolly on one side. And that is how I saw him, mm, here's something funny going on. And uh, in the beginning I didn't even believe it, that he is the flip side of the coin. But afterwards I had to accept it, he's my son. It's mine. Basically, to put it in pure colour terms, I came out hitting Barbies and kissing action figures. You know what I'm saying? I always knew that I don't want that car unless it's pink from Barbie, but I want that porcelain doll and that nice china tea set instead of playing with these things that can hurt you and stuff. Well, my parents had this lifelong dream of me becoming a Western province rugby player. God, no. I instead became a Western province rugby Cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> You're gay, but you can look after yourself. You don't have to live like a pig, having to throw your clothes around. Clean up, have style, and be gay, and have a fucking good job. This is what life is all about. But that people think whatever they want to. You work for yourself, you look after yourself. But he's not doing that. He reckon if you're gay, you don't have to work. I know good guys. Being gay, and successful. Why does he have to live like that? He can be gay and uh, be successful in everything you want to do. But getting involved with the wrong friends is not going to get you anywhere. You're going to go to jail, come back, go back. What example is he for his two nephews? I mean, this is what I always talk to him. I really don't know. He told me that he accepted the fact that Antino was gay, but I don't, I don't really think so. He, he can tell me, he can tell anybody else, but I don't think, really think, down inside himself, he didn't accept it yet. See, every time people. Tino comes out of jail, Tino comes here. Every time. The first time Tino came out of jail, it was storming outside. They had to drop him here. She was in jail. <laughs> Eating the fire. Sitting so now for eating the father the Fridays, the Saturday night, not the Friday night. He told me the other day, yes, that you people, Mommy, you don't want to help me. You don't want to help me get this thing off the ground. I said, and Tino, I can't help you if you can't help yourself. And um, in fact, he is now trying to become right. But I say, I can't push him away. Otherwise, his father can push him away, tell him, go. But I have got a heart. I can't tell my son to go. I love him. I love him so much that I ought to put him out of this house. I don't want to come here and fight with him every night. You think he's going to be nice? I'm fighting every night with my son. My wife is sick. I mean, he's told, look at all we used to have. Brass, all the stuff was there in that case was full. He stole a lot of stuff out of that case. I mean, it's a lot of money put all together. It's, it's a lot of money he stole away from us. And we give him a chance again. It's not coming right. Well, at least I feel fulfilled by the drug because when I want a drug, I can go to a dealer and I'm going to find it. When I want a daddy, I can call on him and he's not going to be there. The drug was there, not my dad. Life is tough on you, brother. You can't see it. It's just too bad. He's got all the education that we can provide. We're putting in a fashion design school. I think we bought him a sewing machine. Steal here, steal there. Take people's stuff and deny. He didn't do it. I am sick and tired of this thing going on between Tony and, and Antino. Because why? Tony don't want to understand. And Tino don't want to understand. Tony will go on and on and on and on over the same thing. Then I'll tell him, you just like a tape recorder, stop now. And then Antino start on the other side. Then I say, you the same, just like your daddy. I don't know what to do anymore. I think I must 
take myself out of here. You should ever sit and talk with people Or else take a walk and create a straight talk Talk what is nice, it will make you feel stronger Listen what is right and say what is wrong You should ever sit and talk with people Or else take a walk and create a straight talk Talk what is nice, it will make you feel stronger Listen what is right and say what is wrong